everybody, welcome to the Espresso, your daily shot of Chinese words with Catherine Xiang. I'm Catherine Xiang. 大家好，欢迎来到我的频道 The Espresso. If you're new to this channel, in this channel we explore the relationship between Chinese characters and words. 在这个频道呢，我们探索中文的字和词之间的关系。你也会学到很多的中国文化和历史小知识哦。So if you haven't subscribed and you don't want to miss our new content, please do and enjoy today's video. We are now in the middle of number series. Today's video will continue with numbers, and last time we finally get to number nine, Jiu, the biggest number in the single digits. Today we're gonna look at the unique combination of nine and five, Jiu Wu, Jiu Wu. The word, the idiom we're gonna learn today is called 九五之尊。九五之尊。Before we dig deeper, let's first, as usual, have a look at these two Chinese characters. 我们首先先看一下这两个数字五和九是怎么写的。We want to explore some really interesting questions related to the combination of nine and five. So, do you know, for example, how many times the bell needs to ring when an emperor passes away? How many dragons you can see on the rope of the emperor, and why? Why Chinese people use nine and five to describe everything that existed in the universe? Okay, so let me help you explain more one by one. 那首先呢，我们先要来看一看“九五之尊”这个词是从哪里来的。First, let's find out the original source of this word “九五之尊”。So, 九五之尊 referring to the honorable position of an emperor, and it was originally in the very famous book called《周易》。This is the classics in Chinese history, and in 136 BC, Emperor Wu of Han and changed the name Zhou Yi into Yi Jing. Let's have a look where the source of Zhou Wu came from. Zhou Wu came from Zhou Yi. Zhou Wu 飞龙在天，力荐大人。Zhou Wu 飞龙在天，力荐大人。So the position of Zhou Wu is as the flying dragon, Fei Long, in the sky in the heaven. Li Jian Da Ren. So it's Li is like it's in the position. It has the benefit of Jian be able to see Da Ren, the lords. So being in that position is extremely unique. It's extremely important. Let's try to answer the first question. Now we have had a look at the original source of where Jiu Wu coming from. Let's try to understand the first question. So why Jiu Wu is related to emperor? Why we use Jiu Wu? Jiu Wu 之尊 the honor of Jiu Wu can represent emperor. The very original explanation is extension of Zhou Yi again. So if we have a look back to The original sentence is linked to dragon, and we know in Chinese culture, dragon always simplify very powerful position and the unique strength. But in addition to that, it's very much to do with the idea of the position of Jiu. So let's explain a little bit more of Jiu, and then we need to start from Ba Gua. So everybody probably have heard of. Yin and Yang. Yin has a very important philosophical idea based on the Taoism in Chinese culture. So, according to Yin and Yang, there's one important aspect. So, Yin and Yang then be able to turn into 
the split of yin and yang. But then we can see in the diagram, yin and yang also can, is they are not mutually exclusive. So yin contains yang, yang contains yin. That become four different aspects. And then if you divide further, it become eight. So the eight symbol, or what we call ba gua, ba gua is a really Taoist cosmology to represent the fundamental principle of the reality. And it's, it's been considered as a range of eight interrelated concepts. And the reason that Fei Long Zai Tian Jiu, it is the position of Jiu is the first Ba Gua. It's called Qian Gua. And that considered to be the biggest and best, most important Gua within the Ba Gua. So this is the first reason of Jiu. And then the second one is because of the position of five. So the five, it's indicate to the most yang. So the yang usually we refer to the male's, you know, power and male personality and the strength. So that's why jiu is considered to be the first in the ba gua and also the, the strongest in terms of dominant of male power. And that referring to the strength of the emperor is then used to related to describe the power, the unshakable status of the emperor. So this is the very first explanation of why Jiu from Yi Jing, according to Yi Jing, is one of the best position because Qian, Qian is the number one of the Ba Gua indicate heaven and Jiu Wu, Wu, the position of the Ba Gua also indicate is the most young, so that's the most powerful. So this combination of Jiu make us related to the idea that it's referring to an emperor. So this is the first explanation. There's another explanation, a little bit probably easier to understand. It's related to the numbers themselves. According to the traditional Chinese culture, we believe being in the middle is the biggest. Being in the middle is the biggest. If you look at the numbers from the 1 to 9, the position, if I list all the numbers together, in the, obviously 9 is obvious is the largest, the highest number. And in the ancient time, so we consider the odd number to be yang. Remember, yang is indicate a male dominant and power. And even number to be in as a female feature. When we look at this picture, we can clearly see that five is the number that is in the middle and it's young number. So that will automatically indicate Jiu Wu, the position of Jiu Wu is the biggest and most important. How do we say that? How do we express what I just said in Chinese? So let's see. 中国古代把数字分成阳数和阴数. 阳数, so the young number, right? The male number. 阴数, female number. 奇数为阳, so 奇数 means all the numbers. All the numbers are yang number. O shu wei yin. O shu wei yin. Even numbers are female feature numbers. Yang shu zhong jiu wei zui gao. So amongst the young number, amongst the young number, nine is the highest. Wu ju zheng zhong. Five is positioned in the middle. Yin er yi jiu he wu. 象征帝王的权威称之为九五之尊。Therefore, we use 9 and 5 to represent 象征帝王的权威, the absolute power and strength of emperor. And 称之为, we call it九五之尊。
Okay, let's try one more time. Imagine you're going to explain this interesting idea why nine to five related to emperor in Chinese culture. So this is explanation, and this is what you can say in Chinese. Let's do it together one more time. 中国古代把数字分成阳数和阴数，奇数为阳，偶数为阴。阳数中九为最高，五居正中，因而以九和五象征帝王的权威，称之为九五之尊。再来一遍，再来一遍。中国古代把数字分成阳数和阴数，奇数为阳，阴数偶数为阴，阳数中。九为最高，五居正中，因而以九和五象征帝王的权威，称之为九五之尊。Okay, how are we doing? Are you enjoying being able to tell such complex ideas in Chinese? Very well done. Let's see another similar expression to explain that. 传统文化认为九五数有九。五居正中，若风，在其之巅，具鼎盛之势，不偏不倚。九五者，位高而不傲，谦和之德，是谓太和之意对应。This is interesting. This is more talking about the personal characteristics of emperor. What kind of person, you know, deserve to be? Emperor. That tells you a lot about how Chinese people perceive what kind of emperor is meant to be. What kind of person can actually deserve to be the position of the emperor? So, Chinese traditional culture believes, traditional culture believes, traditional culture they believe, nine have nine, five are in the middle. So Joe again. This is trying to similar to previously explain. Shu you Joe. So numbers, you know, we have nine, right? We have nine numbers in total. Wu Ju Zheng Zhong, similar as before, five is positioned in the right middle. Zheng Zhong. Ruo Feng as a peak because it's in the center. Zai Qi Zhi Dian. It's on the top. It's in the peak. Ju Ding Sheng Zhi Shi. So it has the. Position as it's always right at the peak. So, 顶峰之势 here is really important. All the emperor, all the you know development of a society, we want to say 顶峰之势 while they are really well established, most well developed. So it's right at the peak of performances. 顶峰之势不偏不倚不偏不倚 It doesn't go. To one side or the other, because it's right in the middle. Okay, that is the idea that you are not going to be biased. You are not going to favor a particular aspect. You're in your management. You're very, very well considered. 九五者 so the person being at the position of 九五位高而不傲位高 you're in a higher position. A bow, but you're not arrogant. Bow here means arrogant. You're not arrogant. 谦和之德，谦和 so very modest, very modest. Again, you can see how important modesty playing a part when in Chinese culture when we consider a person's personality. 是谓太和之意对应 So it is correspondence to 对应 To respond to, to correspond to, 太和 very very peaceful, very very harmonious. This is the idea that if you have a person that is in a power position but remain to be very modest and do not have biased opinion, always very balanced, and this person will ensure the society is peaceful. And is harmonious, and that is the number one criteria. When in the ancient Chinese, we consider who is going to be deserved to be the emperor. 
What is the Intel nowadays? I think one of the things you can see very importantly, you probably notice that if you have a meal, if you have a meeting in the Chinese context, the most important people will always be positioned in the middle. Seating is really important when you do business with China. So the most important person, please ensure they are sitting right in the center. The other thing you probably also notice very common in the Chinese culture, but also in the Western culture as well, when you have a group picture, right? Who's going to be in the middle? Of course, the most influential people are going to be right in the center of the photo. Let's have a look at this, some examples of how, where the chairman of China will be, right? In the, all these important international meetings or summits, and you can see this tells you exactly where power is, okay? This is how we perceive power in the Chinese culture and link back to actually the position of how the numbers are listed in the Jiu Wu being highest, biggest, but also in the center. So this is a second, probably more intuitive explanation of why the Chinese Emperor will have the Jiu Wu Zhizun. Now we explained two reasons of Jiu Wu Zhizun, why Emperor will be considered the Jiu Wu. One is through Yi Jing, the Book of Change. The other is just purely intuitively look at the position of the number. Let's look at some examples how it's being used in Chinese literature. The literature I want to introduce to you guys today is called Feng Shen Yan Yi. Feng Shen Yan Yi, a uh, translation into English as the investiture of gods or the creation of the gods. And that is also known as Feng Shen Bang in Chinese. It's a 16th century Chinese novel. And this is actually one of the novels becoming very famous because it's one of the most important Chinese work to describe gods and demons and that's been written in Ming Dynasty. We have many uh, TV series and movies being produced based on the story of Feng Shen Yan Yi. So in the 63 episode of Feng Shen Yan Yi, by the way, this is uh, written by Xu Zhongling, as I mentioned in Ming Dynasty. The author's name is Xu Zhongling. So it says, Jie Chen Tang Zhi Wei Jiu Wu Zhi Zun, Chen Di Wang Zhi Tong. Jie Chen Tang Zhi Wei Jiu Wu Zhi Zun, Chen Di Wang Zhi Tong. So it's a little bit hard because it's in classic Chinese, but literally it's just saying you are going to take over the throne and you're going to be in the position of the owner of 9-5-Jiu-Wu and that's where you're going to be able to continue to the power of being the emperor. So this is the first time we see how it's written in the famous Chinese literature now I have a question for you. This it's a question that I asked at the beginning of the video. How many bells we need to ring when the emperor passed away? It's forty-five. Why is that? Because we consider it has to be a completion of nine and five. So nine times five, that's forty-five. So in the history, when emperor passes away, the bell has to ring forty-five times. While if it's relatives of emperor, according to the Yi Jing, the position, that's going to be 36 because it's 4 and 9. It's one number less than 5. So that's one of the interesting phenomenon when this happened. The other thing, let's have a look of the interesting uh, phenomenon of the emperor's gown. So let's have a look. Can you see how many dragons here on the emperor's, you know, gown? Five, right? Five. Yes. We have top right, top left in the center, and then top down, top left. 
，所以我们有呃上面上面有左边、右边、中间，然后下面也是左边、右边。So you can imagine if you look at the other side, that's also five, right? You can also see five dragons. So remember the importance of five. However, in total, how many dragons are there? 一共一共有几条龙呢？ So if you notice the top one, they are actually designed in a particular way that the dragon is actually split into two. So from each side, you can see the dragon half of it. You can identify the dragon, but in total, what is on the surface, you can only see eight. If you count, it's eight. So what is ninth one? What what happened to the ninth one? There are nine dragons in total. That's another interesting、uh, story. Some people say, "Yeah, you don't see the ninth dragon because the emperor itself is a dragon." Okay, so that's why there's no dragon. But actually, we've、uh, discovered that the ninth dragon is actually hidden in the internal, the interior side of the gun. So there are indeed nine dragons in total on the gun, and then. From people, whichever direction you look at it, you can see five dragons. So that's another very important detail why Chinese people consider nine five to be extremely honorable, and that's reflected in how the emperor dressed himself. Talked about. Okay, in today's video, we talk about how nine five, the important word Jiu Wu Zhi Zun. 九五之尊 referring to Chinese emperor, and we explained why 九五 is used to refer to Chinese emperor. We also look at how that manifests in different aspects in literature, in the design of the clothing, and we will continue next time because one of the question we didn't manage to answer. Is why Jiu can be referring to the total universe. That seems to be quite fascinating. How can these two numbers in Chinese culture can refer to the whole universe? Jiu Zhi Shu. So that will be the homework for you if you want to explore a little bit more. And that will be what I want to cover in my next video. So I hope you enjoy today's video, and I will see you next time. 再见。